This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's time now to go out to California. Oh, not once again. We don't have to talk to Larry Brown, do yeah, we? Not again. Not again. My God. Yeah. Why won't you just go away? I'll probably have some negative news about the new year already. Uh, really? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Bob Saget. I was going to talk about Bob Saget. Yeah. Uh, when I play this, last night I ran an interview that I did with him in uh, 2008. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, just a lovely guy. Fantastic guy, yeah. Did you know him well? I met him a few times. I met him uh, the first time I met him. I'd been doing comedy for two years. I've I went down to the last lap uh, in San Jose to do an open mic, and he was closing. The, I guess he was coming in for the weekend to headline, and so I met him there, and he was just so nice to me. And uh, he said, I've been doing this for six years. He said, I have, he said, there's nothing I can't, he said, there's nothing I'm afraid of. I can handle any situation on stage now, which didn't, which could sound obnoxious, but it wasn't. And I think what he was trying to say to me to all of us open micers was, you really have to be confident to get through this. And uh, the way he said it, it was actually very cool. Yeah. Well, he was just, I, 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 you know, I mean, I used to have him on the show on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I mean, whenever he was in town, that's how we got people. And I got to know him uh, peripherally. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be one of these people who say, People always say this when they meet somebody once. They say, "My good friend." I know. <laughs> you know, he was an acquaintance, and when he would come into town, he would do my show, and we always enjoyed his banter, and we always enjoyed him. And then he came and did my show at Sirius XM uh, in 2008, and we reminisced about the past. And he was just a sweet, decent guy who I always remember as having the dirtiest act in show business. Yeah, I was another one, but, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he, you know, you remember they did that thing, the aristocrats, where they had right. everybody go and tell the aristocrats and joke. He which, probably had the filthiest of all of them. <laughs> he was the dirtiest one of all of them. Absolutely the dirtiest. And, and he even beat out Gilbert Gottfried. Right. You know, and because the aristocrats as a joke is kind of like an opera. <laughs> you know? I mean, some people sing it well and other people don't. And he just made it into a masterpiece. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh but uh he and yet he had this image of being, you know, Mr. uh uh sweet guy, you know, America's dad, I think they referred to him as in, in some cases. Uh, and that was because of that uh, show, Full House. Full House. Yeah. Which, uh, he dropped, when that show was on, he dropped in the Cobbs one night, uh, which had a large tourist crowd down there, and uh, people were going, oh, my God, Bob Saget. And they, they had no idea that he was dirty. They just knew him from the Full House show. And I, yeah. I guess he, I guess he did an aristocrat-type show that night. <laughs> people were just in absolute horror. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he, he was, uh, you know, uh, it, it just, there was this thing about him that he had no guilt for doing Full House, which I suppose a lot of people would have feel guilty about, you know. He had no guilt about it. He did it well, and it, it made him a fortune. And then he got that America's uh, Home Videos because ABC was 
taking from the pond to get a host on that show, and Full House was part of that pond. And then uh, uh, he did that, I think, for eight years, something like that, America's Home Video. So he did very, very well. And so for the rest of his career, he's been doing a lot of stand-up and things like that, you know, and he was really just a, and as I always remembered him, always a decent guy. I never had a bad thought about Bob Saget. No, you and know. Uh, also, incre- you notice how incredibly quick he was if you, when you interviewed him. He just, yeah, I like, I, I wish I could work like that. But he also, uh, I believe he directed a few movies, didn't he? he, he, uh, he, he uh, I don't. That I don't know. I'll dirty go- work, dirty work with Artie Lang and Norm Macdonald. Oh, okay. Yes, he did direct a film. I do remember that that was a film he directed. But he, um, you know, I mean, it's just uh, it, and, and it, it, the people. I uh, there was a, a clip of Kimmel doing his show, um, of Kimmel doing his show, and. Um, uh, he was doing a thing about Bob Saget because Saget had died. And he started breaking up crying on the air. He said, I, I just love this guy, you know. He said this guy was so good. I mean, there were people he helped out. I mean, uh, uh, Kimmel, for instance, had a problem with his baby being born, and he was born somewhat not deformed but with with a physical problem that could have been deadly. And the kid got through it, and he said Bob was there all the time, calling me. How you? How's he doing? How you doing? You know, and and so this was just one of those nice guys, you know, unlike us. Yes, we we go on forever. <laughs> Horrible men. Yeah, and, but uh, you know, I mean, he just uh, it, and it, it was a, a surprise to everybody because there was nothing saying he was dying. You know, he just apparently had a heart attack or something in his room at the hotel and uh, next thing you know uh we're all sitting here bemoaning his death uh and I, I wish i could say i really knew him well and i'm sure if i'd ever called him with this podcast and said uh, would you be on my podcast he would have said yes immediately but i never thought to do it you know i never liked to impose myself on people is that weird no, it's respectful. I like that because... Um, like, I've been imposing myself on you, but I don't give a shit about you. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, years and years of bubbles in my in my, in my my presence. I mean, you were my, what, traffic guy. Oh, that was wonderful. I loved when you did traffic. <laughs> Man, they were the best traffic reports of all time. Those were fun to do, yeah. I just Can we give people a hint of what it was like? I mean, uh you would you, you didn't really do the traffic, did you? I mean, where did you get the traffic from the beginning? Oh, it with? came out of the, the we had a teletype which uh, was sent from uh, I think it was was it Metro traffic and they would they would send us updates. Uh, yeah. And then Live 105 wasn't really particular about getting much traffic out, so they just told me to do the top three situations in the traffic, and I would add, uh, we had sound effects, and uh, (laughs) every time there was an incident in Richmond, there'd be gunfire. (laughs) (laughs) The other thing thing that you did, and it, it almost became a catchphrase, was when some car was stalled in the right lane or something yeah, like that. Uh, you I would say park at whore, <laughs> which became, I think I sold like a, a thousand T-shirts that said park at whore. <laughs> and, so, and someone complained that uh, that was sexist, and I said, no, it wasn't. I said, because anyone that's going to work is a whore, man or woman. So. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Glad you didn't put up with their... Right. Political correctness. You if know. you're going to a job you don't like, if you're just going for the money, you're a whore, no matter what it is, right? That's right, right. And then if you suck off the boss, then you're really a whore. <laughs> you know. But I mean, I, I um, uh, that, that was I love that when you did that. You know, I'm I, I, I somehow I miss. I think that was maybe my greatest show I ever did. That show, you know. 
And that includes all the stuff I did here in New York that people are so fond of, you know. Uh, I just feel that we, 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 you know, did a good job. So. Well, yeah, you had the, you had the great people that you interviewed. They always had the comics on the show. It was just a fun morning. Yeah, yeah it, just, uh, it was a good piece of entertainment. And I have people who to this day, you know, write me about it and say, that was the best radio I've ever heard. You know, and I think it was. I think it was really, and I'm not saying it because I did it, but I mean, I must say, I probably created an atmosphere in which it could thrive. You know, uh, you guys all knew what I expected out of you, and you right. did it admirably. But I mean, uh, I do think it was one of the best morning shows ever. Uh, and uh, it's a shame that. Uh, we never went national with it, which I had attempted on several occasions, uh, because then the rest of the country would have heard what it was. Uh, yet people in San Francisco will write me and go, "That's the best radio I ever heard. I haven't heard anything better since." You know, and that may, that I appreciate. That that makes me happy. You know. Well, it should you be proud of it? Well, and, uh, I'm it, shortly after that, radio died. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, people think radio's still around, but it's not, you know. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's a, a shell of its former self. But I'm very happy that uh, that we did it and that we, we have those memories. And I should probably put more of those shows together and, and put them up online so people can hear them. Uh, because, I mean, just an average show was hilarious, especially when we got a bunch of comics sitting around uh, riffing with each other. Weren't there some mornings the shows were going so well you'd go 45 minutes overtime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had that uh, that ability. But, I mean, it, 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 sometimes we would get five comics in there all, yeah. all trying to out-riff each other. And when we got, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God, my mind is so bad these days. Uh, the Riff Master. Um, uh, the Black Comic. Uh, Warren? Warren Thomas. God damn it. it can, uh, that name should have just popped into my head and probably would have if I wasn't trying to remember it. Um but Warren Thomas was just the 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 top riff master. He, he was, was probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and when we have him on the show, we knew it was going to be a good morning because everybody was going to be trying. Then you'd have Pearl, and it could, you never got in the middle of that. I don't think because you're no, I wasn't quick enough for those guys. Well, so. well, well your style of comedy was a different pace. I would sometimes just wait back, like they'd go for ten minutes. I'd be like a sniper and occasionally throw a shot in. <laughs> well, I mean, you never. I if I didn't remember correctly, you never really sat there and made up jokes while you were doing the show. No, no, that's uh, you know really you seem, hard to do, and those guys are great at it. Yeah, you you they did, it, but they got their material through riffing. Yeah, you know. Uh, and you got yours through. How do how do how did you how do you write your comedy? Do you sit down and write it, or do you? That doesn't usually work. I just I'll hear something. I'll hear something and react to it, like a not in a riffing situation, but like a like I saw an ad for the. Uh, it said that fifteen percent of Americans are dyslexic. So I thought, wow, just over half. I just. <laughs> Because I saw that as an ad on TV, and I, that's, I got that joke from that. So. What's the joke again? It said uh, 15% of Americans are dyslexic, and I thought 15%, wow, that's just over half. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, but you, that's how you do, did, created your jokes. But yeah, when you got, but, when the, you, and, but the, and that was just watching an ad on TV. But Pearl and Thomas were just, and I've seen Robin and Pearl together. Just like they looked like <laughs> like two mentally ill people. Just they were just so wired and insane. Well, people don't understand this, but the the reason comics are like that is that they are literally creating material every day they're alive. 
I mean, Pearl never stopped riffing. Even off the air, he was riffing. I know. You know? Uh, and uh, But you weren't a riffer, and who? a lot of other comics weren't riffers either. A lot of other comics didn't want to come into that situation, you know? Or if they were there, they pulled back. Because it's it's a very hard thing to do that kind of comedy. Well, some comics can't step out of their act. I think I could I could be in the moment, but I just couldn't riff like Pearl or Warren. But uh, yeah, you know, some guys are not. Some comics aren't good guests that way. They can just do their act, and that's pretty much it. Uh, here's the interesting thing that that I've I've found, okay, in the past, is that um, there are some comics who create a on-stage persona, okay? Um, I'd say yours is an on-stage persona, but you're a lot like that off-stage. I'm a lot like it, yeah. But they create an on-stage persona. I'll give you an example. Kevin Pollack, okay, Uh, create an on-stage persona of the guy going, oh, no, no, sit down, you know, uh, you don't need to do that (laughs) for me because I'm, you know, and he played this egotist. And uh, that was fine uh, up until a certain point when he started believing that character and he started becoming that character and nobody wanted to be around him. Now, after a few years, he suddenly wised up and stopped being that character off stage. But for a while, they kind of lit. Am I right? They, they they weren't that way in the beginning. Then they find the character. Then the character all the time. It overtakes their real personality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily for Kevin, uh, he he did the opposite and uh, um, uh, turned into a pretty nice and decent guy, uh, who I have always enjoyed as a person. Great guy, and uh, yeah, I would say that was kind of a really nice career. Just a lot of good, great character parts and. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, you know, some people just like Slayton. Bobby Slayton is pretty much his character all the time. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, because I think he he I think there's part of him that thinks that this is what people expect out of him. You know, because I remember Bobby when he wasn't quite the Bobby Slayton that's on stage, but off stage he's pretty much the same, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, you are pretty much the same off stage, uh, off stage as you are on stage, except uh, maybe more depressing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, who, this is good. Who, who other comics were like, had, uh, Bobcat was definitely different off stage. Oh, n- nothing like the character. Nothing. No. Yeah. And then, you know what his problem was? What happened to his career where his career got ditched? Because he was he was a sensation. I mean, in San Francisco, God, he made me a lot of money. I held, I produced concerts with him, you know? I mean, and and we, we would sell tickets. I remember we sell, sold one set of tickets for a thing called Bobcat Goes to Hollywood or something. That was the uh, San Car- Circle Star show. Yeah, and it sold out in 15 minutes. Wow. You know, uh, that's like a thousand seater or something like that. I don't know how many people fit in that theater. And many but, people have told me that was the greatest comedy show they ever saw. It was Warren Thomas, Bob Rubin, Dana Carvey, Goldthwait. Yeah. And uh, but but uh, Goldthwait, what happened with Goldthwait was, at a certain point he is, and this happens with people who play a character sometimes. He got to hate the character. You know, he felt the character was defining him. Well, of course it was. It was a character you came up for people to pay attention to you. You know. Yeah. Then he he didn't he stopped doing it. I just thought, wow, I I would have ridden that into the sunset. He, he could have made so much more money with that. But I guess he really got sick of it. Well, I know he got sick of it. And uh, he he changed his tone and stuff in the act, and the act he was doing was brilliant. I mean, he made one of the most brilliant comments to me. Uh, we were riding in a car somewhere, going somewhere, and I said to him, "Let me ask you this." I said, "Don't do you think that your character 
has limitations. In other words, that you, you can only ride him so far. And his answer was, well, Buster Keaton played his character forever and did quite well. Charlie Chaplin played his character. He said, you can take a character like this and then morph him into any number of circumstances. And I thought that was a brilliant observation on his part. Yeah, he's really smart. But he, he never took his advice, his own advice. After a while, he abandoned that character. And he didn't do all the things he could have done with that character. So, it, you know, uh, it, 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 he, he, I think, had a failed career, if you want my opinion, because he didn't believe in the character he was doing. You know. People don't realize this about a comic like Bob Goldthwait. He used to go on, on stage and scream. And you couldn't follow that kind of act, could you? No, I don't think anyone could. He was Anybody? Uh, literally, was, his act was like a guy, it was a man having a nervous breakdown. Yeah, you could not follow that act. Not because it was great. You couldn't follow it because the tone of it literally turned the room, you know? And anybody who tried to follow him couldn't follow him. They didn't have that kind of manic intensity. Plus, the audience was just exhausted when he was through. So, you know, nobody he, wanted to follow him, so he became a headliner almost immediately. He did, yeah. And he, uh, interesting that he was not, he started out in Boston where he didn't get much uh, response there. Then he came out here and he was like, overnight, he was just huge. It was amazing. He came on my show, and the thing that he, I guess, liked he liked about me at that time, he got to hate me for some reason, and I've never been able to figure out why, um, is that when he first came on my show with the screaming and the shouting, I didn't do what a lot of other talk show hosts would do, but say, well, Bob, yeah, but let's calm down and let's find out what Bob Goldthwaite is really like. Instead... I played straight man to his character, right. yeah. and he appreciated that. And it was also my sense of comedy. Let me say, you don't you don't try to take somebody who's got a character and then have him break that character. Instead, you play along with that character. And uh, I'm sure any number of times talk show hosts would say to him, "Well, Bob, what do you really like?" You, know, you never ask that question. That's that's a no no, because that's not what he's come on the air doing. He's come on with this character, play into the character, play to the character. Yeah, so that's why I was a good co uh, t host for comics because I understood comedy. Well, you were the, yeah. Most people in morning radio didn't understand comedy at all, so you did. And I understood how to be the straight man, which talk show hosts don't like being straight men. They think, in fact, if they got a comic on, they've got to top the comic. And I was never a big fan of Steve Allen's, but I heard some advice he gave once on the air. He said, never try to top a comic when they're on your show. You're going to be there tomorrow, okay? They're not going to be. You And right now, they're sitting there on your show working for you. Let them work. Let yeah. him let him make people laugh. You don't have to make people laugh all the time, you know. In fact, his quote was that in order to do a, a show, you don't have to be funny all the time. You just have to be fun, and it's easier to be fun than funny. And I yeah. I thought that was a great observation. That's the way I work. You know? Yeah, I think Johnny Carson understood that too. Yes, his show, he was Johnny Carson was never really funny. He was fun, and the show was fun. And then he would bring on George Burns and let George Burns yeah. be funny and not try to top, you know, George Burns or Jack Benny or. Yeah, he realized if somebody in the show was good, it made him look good. Yeah, exactly. Or Don Rickles. <laughs> How could you possibly try to top Don Rickles? What? Yeah, or, he, or he, he he often played the straight man to Dangerfield, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But Nothing more valuable than a straight man in comedy. Yeah. Like, uh, I still love uh, 
because Bud Abbott. <laughs> yeah, he was a great. He was probably the greatest, one of the greatest straight men of all time. You know who the I greatest? Think so yeah. You know who the greatest straight man of all time was George Burns. Oh, that's right. Yeah, with Gracie Allen, the, he he was perfect. If you just watch him, perfect straight man. Well, anyway, it's good talking to you again, Bubs. Yes, yeah, always good to start off a new year on a death note. So. Want to do it again next week? We will. <laughs> we will, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, okay, there he is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown, uh, doing his Larry Bubbles Brown thing whatever that is okay anyway it's wonderful i love i love larry oh by the way i've heard from um um uh, uh kravitz uh steve kravitz called me what was yesterday and he's had a few medical problems and things like that but he'll be back in the middle of february on our show he told me he'd be ready to do it then but he's having some some uh some cosmetic work well it isn't cosmetic work i won't i'm i'll let him tell you if he wants to tell you but it's it's nothing serious, okay? It's not like he's having cancer operations or anything like that. Leave that to me, okay? Anyway, uh, where do we go here? Okay, we want to go to our citizen panel. They're getting lined up and uh, ready to go, so let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's see here. First of all, I've got to admit them all. Uh, do, 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 do. Push the button, Bennett. There we go. And uh, they're all joining. And here you can see them popping in there. There's Charlie Wallace, and there's uh, there's Josh Wheeler, and that's the beginning of a citizen panel. That's how it starts. And uh, uh, how y'all doing today? Doing uh, good. Beautiful day in Austin. A beautiful day in Austin. Yeah, it was beautiful here too, but it was also very cold. So. You know, and right now it's uh, it's 24 degrees at uh, two minutes past the hour. Yeah, that's the way we used to do that in radio. Um, it's 58 now, but it was 78 this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I had to think. I was thinking about, uh, who was I thinking about today? Wait a minute. Kimberly Solver. Well, let's see who Kimberly Solver is. Let's see if Kimberly actually is a person who's going to be here. What? What? Oh. Whoa. That was not good. That was not good. <laughs> okay, well, we won't let Kimberly Solver in again. I missed it. Hmm? I missed it. It was quick. It was quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, every now and then we get these people who try to get on here and make trouble. You know, that's fine with that's fine with me. Uh, so uh, no, it was it was a very it was very it was. Not, I looked outside. I haven't gone out in like a week. I mean, I I'm afraid to go out there. You yeah. Know? You know, uh, if I don't have to, I don't. You know, and I I'm you're the same way, Charlie. Um, it's uh, fun and games until someone loses an eye. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very intelligent sweatshirt. You use t-shirt. You wear intelligent t-shirts, don't you? I don't. E I don't even understand it because I don't know that kind of math. But that's uh, uh, minus four. What? 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 what the square it, root of minus four should be two i. Oh, I see. Okay. I is the is the square root of minus one. It's all fun and games till someone loses an eye. Boom. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Well, now L Mason. Boy, I don't know if I uh, do. I do. I trust these people. Let me see here. Uh, uh, L Mason, are you there? Um, I'm gonna. Dan Meyer calling. L Mason, are you there? Are you there? No. Uh, yes, he's there. He said. To everyone, okay. yes. Okay, well, show us your picture, uh, L, or we're going to have to get rid of you. Fixing uh, my mic, it says. No, fixing my mic? Okay. Yep. Um, let me see here. He's fixing his mic. 
Uh-huh. That's what it says. If you see, folks, you can see that on the screen at the bottom here. Yeah. See? Drivers are supporting. What is Drivers it? are uh, supporting. Okay. Well, why don't you, maybe Mason, uh, Mason is it Mason L? I guess. Are you there, Mason? Well, I, I can't I can't play these games this long. I, I have I have better things to do with my life than wait on something like this. Wait a minute. Oh, these are a bunch of phonies. Okay, hold on a second. Wait <laughs> a second. Uh, bah, bah, send to um, oh, put in waiting room. There we go. Okay, and there's some other people here. John Smith, Jerry Rodriguez. Do you know any of these people? Uh -huh. No. No. Okay, so I go. I'll go remove, remove. I don't want to. No wonder you me. don't have a lot of people on your show. You remove all the good people. Well, <laughs> good <yeah>. people. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 people can see what I'm doing, oh. by the way, because these things come up in front of the screen here. But we got rid of them. Dexter. Uh, let's see, Dexter Brickle's iPad. Who well, is he's that? On his iPad. Oh, this is ridiculous. People are coming He's on. He's probably here. from Austin with a name like that. I, I'm, not, I'm not letting any of these people in here. All of a sudden, on Friday night, they want to join your... Uh, yeah, we've been found. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is uh, like, uh, well, remove. Boom, boom, boom. Let me get rid of him. Okay. Remove. Come on, remove. Uh, then we remove some... We don't remove some more here. Bella, we remove that. Uh, no, I don't want to report. Okay, see all that stuff keeps come up in front of the screen. That's what the problem is. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I can just leave, I can just leave them in the uh, in the waiting room, and and they can waste their time there. You know. Um, hmm. Don't report. Okay. Um, remove. Uh, don't report it. Okay. Remove. Hey, how you doing, Josh? Yeah, you guys talk to each other while I'm getting rid of these people. Oh, there are a ton of them. There are a ton uh, of them. Doing pretty well. How's everybody doing? Well, here's I'm Kevin. I can admit Kevin. And yeah. let me I don't see. Know. I don't really like Kevin. Hmm? And Amy? Is that our Amy? I don't think so. I don't think so. I thought so. Kevin was the master of arms. What? <laughs> You thought Kevin was the master of arm at arms? Yes. Yeah, 15 no, people have entered the waiting room. I wish I could get rid of all of them at one. It doesn't have a thing where you can get rid of them all at one time. That's the problem. Yeah. I remember the first couple of nights you were on Zoom, you got Zoom bomb, and all these porn pictures were kept coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can I can live with that. Can I can you send all those people to the Republican National Headquarters? I don't know, but I mean, I don't know how we... Let's see here. We're now up to 17 Ooh. people in the waiting room. Uh, oh, oh, here are some with really nice names, too. Anyway, uh, well, we'll just leave them in the waiting room. They can waste their time sitting there. Uh, eventually, they'll all give up, I would imagine. I, I'm just wondering how I can get rid of all of them. There's no way to get, to get rid of all the people in the waiting rooms. Well, we just lost one, and we're going to lose more, I'm sure. Um, go ahead. Try it. Try it. Try it, folks. Yeah, we're down to fourteen now. All right. Well, yeah. I said hi to Josh. Hi, hi. How are you doing, Kevin? Okay. How are you? I'm doing good. It's a nice day in the Bay Area today. Yeah, yeah it was. Not by the way, was. by the way, right. you you were mentioning you were mentioning Texas, and mm -hmm. uh, we have a good friend Scott Boddicker, uh, who calls the program. Yeah. And the question is, where does Spike Boddicker live? In Texas. He lives in Plano, doesn't he? He lives in Plano, Texas. What happened in Plano today? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something happened oh, in uh, Plano? Uh, yeah, very important. Uh, the guy who's being indicted for sedition, that's oh, where they brought him before a judge. Okay. I guess so he lives... he free on bond now? Huh? Is he free on bond because it's in Texas? I don't know. Something like that, yeah. Let me just see here. Is there anybody here who we know that should be let in? Uh, no, no. So they're they're all going to, uh, they'll, they'll all eventually give up because we won't 
we won't pick them up. Uh, no, but uh, it, it, it was Plano, Texas, is where they uh, they had the I didn't uh, realize that. the, the was hearing. Plano yeah. east of you, Charlie. Plano's up in the Panhandle, I think. Yeah, I thought so too, and I thought I thought that uh, Scott lived in the e on the eastern side of Texas. Well, I hope tonight when he does, he no. he usually call uh, he never calls our show lately. He calls the Monday show, but he, calls, he doesn't call this yeah, show. Yeah, and he calls Jack show. And he a calls lot. Jack show a lot. Uh, but uh, he, uh, if he's out there, I wish he would call because I'd love to talk to him about it. Because you know it's happening in his neck of the woods. Yeah. What the hell, you know? Hmm. Well, we're down to nine people in the waiting room. I hope they're having a, a good time waiting there. Um, Why don't uh, you do your show, Alex? Let them wait. Huh? Yeah. Let's just do, do the show. Let's do the show. Yeah. Let them wait. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I just keep looking to see if any of our people are trying to get in yeah. because I can let them in. I can let people in one at a time. One day I should just let all these people in and see what they all do. Absolutely. You know, what kind of porn they'll put up. And <laughs> what kind Richard of... Nixon will come back to life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But don't worry. If you're sitting out there and you're trying, don't try any longer. I'm not letting anybody in that I don't recognize, Okay. All back on Monday. And I hate that because it could be one person here who actually was a new caller who would like to participate. But I doubt that, so I'm not going to. Listen, I had a thought today, and I am. Uh, I was watching uh, MSNBC, and they were spending the pretty much uh, 20 minutes with a panel. I think, uh, what's his name, that, uh, that advertising executive was on there, and Al Sharpton. And they were all talking about how disappointed they're getting at uh, our uh, our president, you know, yeah, uh, and that, uh, that so is CNN. Yeah, yeah, yep. and I th I feel I'm beginning to feel the same way. I'm mad at him because he's really screwing screwing the pooch. You know, well, you know what? I thought about it too, but don't we do this to every fucking president in the first year? <sighs> it. it Yes, but he's making really big mistakes. Okay. Well, I mean, we've well, never... he ran on forgiving student loan debt and he hadn't done a thing. He didn't even need Congress for that. I'm not. I'm not saying that he hasn't. You know. You know what it is. Baked his own cake, but he's okay. got a lot of shit going on too. You know, he yeah. he inherited a lot of bullshit. Yeah. But, you know, I. I uh, He's got a lot on his plate, and he didn't inherit a mess. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. I just don't see that uh, it's much different than any other president. The first year is a piece of crap, anyway. Usually, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, the first year uh, year is a piece of crap. But they were talking about some classic mistakes he's making. One of which is that it's what I've been saying. He really shouldn't appear on television that much. He mm -hmm. should send in his people for that. You get, you know, I, I was yeah, saying well. last night, you know, if it's something that has to do with the economy, send in your economy guy. And if it's something that has to do with health, send in your health guy. The trouble with him is he looks too doddering. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's, like I said last night, that's what we said about Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we said about Trump that we, we no Trump was a different story. We didn't like Trump because he was an asshole, because he was he was he, he was working against the best interests of this country. Yeah, but remember, Trump would talk and talk and talk about all the stuff, and then he'd have the experts behind him, but he wouldn't let them speak. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it's just gotten you know, it's gotten pretty pretty terrible. He doesn't have a, a good presence, you know. Uh, and and what happened? You know, I often I, once I talked about him this way, and I'll, I'll mention it that I once went to a store looking, and I was walking by the store, and there was this little kitten in the window. And the quit. I went in and I looked at the kitten, and the kitten was jumping up and down. Pick me, pick me, choose me, choose me. Oh, I'm all kinds of fun and rolling around and just being the <laughs> sweetest kitten in the world. So we bought the cat, took it home. That was the last day it was ever that way. 
After that, it was the meanest, just weirdest cat I ever owned, okay? And that's how I feel about this whole thing. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing that we, we've, um, that, as that cat. We saw this guy running for election, and he looked pretty good. You know, he looked alert. You know, I don't know. Maybe he was doing cocaine or something. I have no idea. I, I don't see how we had a choice. We had a choice between... Well, well we'll Trump. get to that in a second. No, I have a choice not to vote or to just vote for somebody else, you know. Um, but, I mean, I, I voted I voted for, for Biden, and look what happened. Again, I vote for somebody, and they turn out to be terrible, you know. Oh, so, so it's your fault. Yeah, so it's my fault, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, I just think that he's, uh, he's I mean, to talk about doddering, I'm getting that way myself, but, you know. Uh, you don't have to agree, Alan. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not being sexist or ageist when I'm saying this because I happen to be 82 years of age. But I wouldn't want, wouldn't be president of the United States either. I'd do the, the country a favor, and even if I was really good at it, I'd feel I was a little too old to run this country. B Biden had this, what his, where his ego was, he just had to be president, you know. Rather than say, yeah, I'm a little too old for this. The young, it's a younger person's game. Let's go out and find the best person we can have run against Trump. He just had to have it. And he's turned out to be, so far, terrible president. You know? I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I was he just going to say, like, I wouldn't call him terrible. He really didn't Trump was that. terrible. Trump Biden was terrible. may be disappointing, but well, I don't think Trump, terrible. Trump was terrible in a whole different way. Yeah. You know, so. Tony, did your coffee come? Oh yeah, thank you, Alan. It came. You're yeah, oh, you sent yeah. coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Was I it... didn't open it yet. I'll have it tomorrow when I'm watching the four thirty it... game. The Bengals. Is it? We we could tell on Charlie's post your coffee was kicking in. <laughs> yeah. I got the Maxwell House still tonight. I don't. Want, I'm going to save the Dunkin' Donuts for tomorrow for Burroughs and yeah. the Bengals. Yeah. 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 Oh shit! Were you talking you shit on Charlie Post again? Yeah, <laughs> I missed it. Yeah, Dallas will win that, Charlie. Don't worry. What Jimmy are you G coaching now, team. Tony? Uh, no, you know what you say. No, I, Dallas will win for Charlie. They they're gonna win Dallas tomorrow. Uh, Sunday. Oh, good. I'm keep saying that. Keep saying that. Too much, too much talent on Dallas, I can tell you that. But here's a question with with uh, with Biden, though, Alex. I think he's being controlled I'm, by Charlie, I'm sorry, but we're not we're we're frenemies right now. Yeah. Oh, I mean I like the nineties, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying it's strictly as a football it. fan. It's just it's, keep talking, Tony. Keep talking. Go ahead. It's not a guarantee. I mean I, no, I think they get I think you're gonna beat the Henry. I think they're gonna beat him handling, Charlie, I'm telling you. There's too much talent. They got gameplay. Game yeah, go ahead, Tony. Yeah, keep talking. Uh, all I can say is Arizona, Denver. You can't take anything no. for granted. I'll tell you what it comes down to. You ready for this, Charlie? Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Jimmy G. And in the playoffs, the quarterback wins. Alex has lost control. <laughs> he doesn't know what Jimmy G's got his no idea what I'm talking about. He throws those right. flutters over the middle. Diggs is going the other way with it. Hey, go, right, go, right, go right ahead. The, the more you talk about that, the more I get to keep my sports Emmy. Yeah, Alex, the 40 out of quarterback, Jimmy G, he's got his hand in a sling. I'm going to tell you something. Diggs is going to pick him off over the middle. Did you oh, see the game last week? Diggs, 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 Diggs is going to wipe him all over the place. Diggs is going to pick six. Absolutely. I'm telling you, they don't want to throw. And Absolutely. Shanahan is not a genius if you think as a, co as a coach. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, a lot a of people, right a lot now. of people give Shanahan a bad time. Okay. And, and <laughs> he's not, I, yeah, he's I, off the ball I think, name, I think that's highly. He's not that terrible. I'm telling you, if, if if the Niners hadn't had so many injuries, they'd be a lot higher seed. They just yeah. they had a lot of injuries this year. I'm ha celebrating. I'm having fun removing. You can't you can't play quarterback for on laying on your back. Yeah. Enough said. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy G throws yeah. those flutter is over the middle. That I'm telling you, you could take that to the bank, man. When he throws that over the middle. You yeah, certainly had three Charlie throw. As soon as he threw the ball, I said, "My, I told my brother, they can pick." We got a kid in the background, back Tony. Bye bye. He's not Steve Young, I'll say that. 
If people it's notice, if people it's notice, I'm knock him out. I think if people notice, I thought that was your new. Boston's will knock him out, Charles. I'm telling you. By the way, if people notice on the screen. I'm knocking these people off <laughs> like crazy. I was going to talk about Biden, but they got me all jacked up for the football game and the yeah. call. I just watched the Madden doc, which I'm ready to fly. Oh, <laughs> that was really. Do you see the Raiders? How? If they were letting them hit today, like the Raiders were hitting in the 70s, Brady would have been decapitated about eight years ago. He's never playing at 44. Even at the 80s. Look at Montana. He got beat up really bad. Yeah, That's how the Giants beat him. They sent Marshall and Taylor in, and they were ready to knock him out. Well, they knocked him out of the championship game when they Marshall hit him. Hey, go the ahead. Giants. Go ahead with this. I, you know. Oh, yeah, you guys. Go ahead. Is, any, is, 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 is anybody listening to this? We may have found a new new topic to do on this show. I should get my Joe Montana rookie card. They can see I'm still a 40. Oh, hey, we got a lot of people watching this. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Continue. Tony's, pred- Tony's prediction tomorrow. You ready, Charlie? Sunday night. Dallas 27, 49, and 17. That's my prediction. And I predict they will pick him off at least two times. Dallas. Can I? Can I bet that on F- Van FanDuel? I think the oh, Bengals like are going to beat the Raiders, yeah, too. I would, get, I would do the parlay, Alex, for you, too. I would do it. We'll tell you Bengals anything. are going to beat the Raiders, too. Oh, yeah. Joe Burrows is going off tomorrow. I, that yeah. kid is good. He's got balls to steal Burrows. He don't care who he's throwing against. He's like, I'm going to get this done. <laughs> That'll be a good game, too. I, I'm going to watch every game this weekend. Well, Charlie, Sorry. when you see that guy Chase from LSU? Yeah. He was that guy is like, forget yeah. about it. He was my fantasy. on my fantasy team. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Gino, just laid out to him because he's going to be wide open somewhere over the middle. I was like, oh, wait, did you hear what you just on. said? Are you talking about sex? No, I'm talking about uh, Jamari Chase. Oh, okay, because I don't. Well, sometimes no, people are talking no, about Alex. Like a little Jerry Rice. He's so good. When, when talk- no, Alex, that's Chubb. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just yeah, when people are talking up, sports, up. many times it sounds to me like they're talking sex. <laughs> Really? I still oh, love yeah. that Emmy you got, though. I, I still love that you met Steve Young, who's one of my favorite nineties, actually. Did I meet Steve, Steve Young? Young? Yeah, I did. Remember you said you did? Remember you yeah, had I him did. on the show? I, mean, I what forget. Was, what was the weather like today where you're at? Alex, I wasn't today. Well, not briefly, but it was a little, it was getting cold. It was getting windy over here, actually. You know, you know what me. you're doing, uh, Alan? What? Is is uh, David Letterman. I watched a bunch of David Letterman clips, yeah. about an hour and a half worth of How's the weather where you are? Really? And he just picks a name at random out of the phone book, calls them, and asks them, "How's the weather where you are?" Did that? I like that. Yeah. yeah. I thought I could change Tony's subject a little oh. bit. I was ready to go to Biden, but now you got me all juiced up like a football. You're the one that gave him coffee. Yeah, I yeah. love the, I'll be up all night now watching football documentaries. Yeah, but he's not going to drink until tomorrow. Wait a minute, Lucky did you guys. did you drink some coffee tonight before you came yeah, on? Yeah, I got the yeah, Mac yeah, exactly. Hot going again. Oh, good. Good Mac. Oh, <laughs> oh, God help Alex, us all. And then I watched the old TV show. God there. I got help us all. Ladies and gentlemen. It's Alan's fault for sending them the shit. I, <laughs> oh, I didn't send him the Maxwell House. I'm not that cheap. He sent me the good stuff. I got dunk good donuts from him. Yeah, he sent him cocaine. Oh, uh, <laughs> Oh, Charlie, I got my cake ready for Dallas Sunday. I got some stuff on the side. I'm not leaving the house for the whole weekend. No, wait, 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 wait. You're Eagles territory, Tony? Oh, Philly fans are horrible. I told you I went to see a Met game up there. <laughs> Alex, you're, Charlie, they're terrible fans. I went to see a Met game with my brother years ago in the 80s when they had McReynolds, Shrubbery. I think McReynolds might have hit the wall of the vet. The fans were cheering. Did you ever hear fans cheer? <sighs> The guy's on the floor, almost knocked out. I said, they're horrible for this. Isn't that like a little monkey, a chia pet? I get my, let me get my Montana card. Can, so, can you mute him or kick him off? <laughs> no, we'd like to have a show. It by accident. <laughs> so tell me deleted him instead of... Tony, Josh, are you... Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Josh, are you into sports? Oh yeah, he's got. His yeah, he's a big Bengals fan. Yeah. Oh, he's a big Bengals. Going to the game tomorrow. Oh, yeah. okay, he's going to the game tomorrow. So yeah, all right. So. Football. That's... Not not the white ball. <laughs> These Tony talks in one sentence here. Well, <laughs> oh my God, I know <laughs> on the Facebook. Let me see if we can. What do you? It's downstairs, so I gotta get it later. But we'll get it. We want to see it. I want to see it. Go, back. Back. Let me go, see. go, go get it. Go. Goodbye. What is, what is it? We, what is it? We want to see it. 
<laughs> and we need to start talking about something else really quick. <laughs> <clears throat> Should I put him in the waiting room with the rest, with the rest of the bozos? Yeah, you can beat them all up. Yeah. Hey, yeah. they're pointing out in the chat room that 6.4 million jobs created under Biden. That's twice as many under the whole uh, Trump presidency. Oh, really? That's just one year. Okay, good. Well, that's fine. I, I didn't get one of them. <laughs> you know. I didn't want one of them. Well, you see, part of the thing is, is that I, I think that um, what's going to happen in the midterms, you can disagree with me, Josh, if you want to, or agree with me, what's going to happen in the midterms is it's all going to be elect, an election on your buying power at the grocery store. It isn't going to be COVID, and it isn't going to be a bunch of other things. It's going to be that. When people go to the store, and all of a sudden, I looked at stew meat on, at, uh, at Costco today. Uh, it normally went for about 20 to 20 bucks for a big thing of like three pounds of stew meat. All right. Uh, and uh, uh, for uh, three pounds of stew meat, that same stew meat that was $20 is now 35 for stew meat. That's you crap know what? Meat. There's 849,000 Americans that don't care what the price of meat is now. If they had just voted Hillary in, they'd still be alive. Oh, oh, you're talking about the dead people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But all I'm saying is I think that the, that the midterm is going to be won and lost on, the, on that part of the economy. I'm sure you're right. You know? That, I mean. He's not doing so good with the economy. Yeah. All the backlog, all these trucks and. and it's uh, all bullshit. I was at the store today. There weren't any empty shelves. Well, you got to come here then. Yeah. Oh, did you see the uh, the news tonight? Had uh, all the trucks on the trains that are getting ripped off down in L.A. Yeah, I saw that. What? The, what's My this? God. What's this? Well, they're 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 now robbing the trains. You know, the the containers and the mm -hmm. UPS trucks and yes. the trailers and stuff that are riding on the back of the trains. Yeah. There's like this whole section in L.A. that's just full. They're busting open the back of the trucks and they're just Pushing all the boxes everything out. Everything out of the boxes and throwing the Taking boxes everything out of the boxes, and there's like this mile long stretch of boxes all over the fucking tracks. Wow. And it's Amazon, it's, you know, COVID tests, it's everything just plowed through. And they cleaned it up like 30 days ago. I saw <laughs> them cleaning it up in the news. Was... And it's all, it's all fucked up again. And it's, you know, people are, you know, the, the news reporters going Southern out Pacific there. Pacific has three cops in their whole department. Yeah. Assigned to the whole state of California, and they'll only they'll only go out there if they get called. Right. And there's just miles of boxes of, of you know Amazon, you know anything you shipped. Yeah, you could be, be down all there. All that stuff. Yep. Yeah, In this know. six or seven block section of Union Pacific. Who who got Tony to go get something? Who was it? Good <laughs> good going, Brian. You really get good. cabinet bucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and by the way. If you have time, folks, uh, you can um, see if these people keep calling. Uh, subscribe. Huh? Subscribe. I wish you, you, subscribe you see, to the show. Yeah, yeah, like and subscribe. subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe to us. Yeah. Do, be, be useful. Uh, you know. But anyway. Uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 we're just, we're living in such strange times. It just doesn't get any better, does it? You know, I I just I just wish um, um, I, what I wish is that I could go on a vacation. I can't even do that. You know, we spent two years in the house for crying out loud. You know, and and it Me just too. I'd you know, like to go too. I do, and here's the other thing. Fuck the CDC. Yeah, they keep coming up. Have you heard the latest? They, they keep coming up with new... You know what the latest one is? Well, maybe the nose swabs aren't good, which should be a saliva test. Well, I'd much rather have given saliva than have a fucking yeah. stick stuck up my nose. Yeah. That's the same swab they stick inside your dick to check for uh, chlamydia. It's chlamydia. Chlamydia, yeah. sorry. 
but uh, me, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean it. Oh, so anyways, I was saying about Tony. <laughs> must have been the coffee pot. I can't, coffee. I can't find it. It's in her. I got a little safe. She must. I think my sister moved my car downstairs. Why don't you go down? Why don't you go downstairs? Go downstairs to find. It. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go down to the safe deposit box and see if the bank's open. <laughs> I mean, what do you think is going to do then? I mean, it, you know, if Biden's not living up to anything, the economy keeps I'll tanking. I'll find it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's like 3.9% unemployment rate now. Lowest in like 40 years. What do you mean the economy's yeah, bad? But, but the unemployment rate is down... But the amount of people getting jobs <clears throat> is low as well, because nobody's taking the jobs. Yeah, and, they're not taking the jobs. Well. Yeah. And I think everybody just sees the prices. They see gas still climbing as pause right now, but it's supposed to start climbing again. <clears throat> they see all the meat still going up. I mean, the only thing that's come down is like the wood. The wood at Home Depot started coming back down, but other than that, everything else is still still climbing. My really? wood comes down once in a while. What? What'd you, what'd you say? What'd you I say? Said my wood comes down once in a while. You're, that is a euphemistic term, is it not for the penis? Yes. Okay. It is. <laughs> you, you, are, you are smarter than you lead on. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Tony's back. Yeah. Did you find Let's it, Tony? It I, I think I know where it is, but I was. I well, then go get it. Then go get Go get it. Not go in home safe, but you're not you know trying hard enough. You're not trying trying hard enough, Tony. No, but Alex, that safe. She's got so much shit in it that I got to throw out. She saved everything. This woman. A safe. She found the old. Yeah, I have a little. She had a little safe. I found the old Chinese menus. She had a little thing in her room with menus that stores were closed for ten years ago. I was pulling them out. How big is the safe? It's a nice size safe. It's like this big. Well, go yeah. downstairs and go get it and bring it up. Wow. I looked in there, I couldn't find it because there's so much old stuff in there that she would keep. It's like, you got to see it. It's like, you look like she's holding Fort Knox in this house. Mm-hmm. Let me get this. Hold on, I'll get you what she says. I don't want to take All it. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll get you the old menus. That this, the Moon Diner has been closed since probably like 1995. <laughs> Aren't you glad I sent him decaf coffee? <laughs> I don't think his body knows the difference. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably not. There's probably enough caffeine left in the decaf that he just has an extra couple cups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, he's back. Brian, what you started by talking about sports? Yeah. She used to like watching the games this one. What is that you just brought in? This was one of, I don't know what the hell she would call this. This is one of her angel like keeping. Like, as you can see, it has, like, angels on it. Now, this woman was, like, so holy, forget about it. So, I was going, these are, like, old like old things. like That's old real New York, things. folks, by the way, what you just heard. Forget about it. But then it. she kept the Chinese menu. Now, look at this one. Moon Palace. This place has been closed, Alex, for probably 10, 15 years. She still kept it. You know why? Free delivery. It had the specials she liked. So if anything went free to the house for under 20 bucks, we saved the menu. <laughs> And the scary thing is, the scary but thing is, like this place has been closed for how long? Hey, Tony, been, yeah. the scary thing is, you're saving it now, too. I know. It's like, I don't want to throw it out because I'm laughing at it, actually. I'm like, oh my. You could probably sell it on eBay, and you probably will. Yeah. Well, if we're in China, <laughs> actually, the chinks are still open, but oh, this is like a full photo now. They changed hand four times. Actually, the food's not as good as it used to be. Not as good as it used to be. Man, what are you going to do when they, they stop? Never as good as the original, I say. What else do you have? With a, oh, oh, don't ask! Alex, the favorite pizza you like? California Pizza Kitchen. She actually thought they were only in California. She didn't realize they were a fucking That Kitchen. they were delivering from California? <laughs> she probably would have thought that. There was one in Middle Village. She says, aren't they only in California? She never understood the thing of a chain restaurant. I says, my, what do you think McDonald's is only here in New York? I mean, come on. She didn't get out much, I'm telling you. This woman was great. She was, I miss it though, because she was so goofy. You, 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 right, you know this, you know this, this, uh, this uh, guy on Saturday Night Live, Pete Davidson? Yeah. yeah. You know, he's going with uh, Kim Kardashian now. 
So he's spending all his time in California instead of in New York where the show is, right? And the other day they caught him doing something that may never let him come back to New York again. They what found they, they found him and he and uh, uh, Kim going to a California pizza restaurant. Oh, that's not pizza. And we're that's afraid California. that he's addicted now to pineapple pizza. I had that in Vegas. It was actually good, Alex. We, in Vegas. What? I tried that in Vegas when my brother treated me. Oh, jeez. Hey. I know. I know you were. And I'm from New York. No, no. There's no such thing as pineapple pizza. Alex, look at this place. Frankie's place. This place must have closed up in three months. We still got the menu. I don't remember eating, but I got to put this away. This woman got Yes, I think you got to put it. Because all the places that she kept it in our angel box. Pick a man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Tony, yeah. come back. Come back with the menus. Grab one of oh, those yeah. menus. Just grab any one of the menus. Put oh, your, okay. put your hand in. Close place. your eyes and put your hand in. Okay. And then, here we go. Pick it up. Okay. Start Frankie's reading place. the menu of Frankie's Palace to us. Okay. I don't remember. All right. Breakfast sandwiches. Alex, this isn't a bad price. Two eggs with bacon, ham, or sausage. So I guess you'd pick one for three seventy-five. Yeah, but how they long ago was, was that? Yeah, that sounds really cheap. Now three seventy. Exactly. What can you get for three? How old is this fucking thing? She kept everything. I don't even know. Probably there was no fucking internet when this thing was here. It doesn't say the date. Three seventy-five. You can't even get a cup of coffee and a roll for three seventy-five today. <laughs> yeah. An egg McMuffin for three seventy-five. All right. What Pizza. else? What else? Every, what else? Okay. Let's go to the. Oh, this sounds good. A plain omelet, four dollars. I'm not even lying. This, this. How old is you? Can't get an omelet for four dollars. No, she, she kept a Western omelet, Alex. Right with home fries, six fifty. Now it's like fourteen dollars. And I know she didn't get the full. Oh, who eats a full Irish breakfast, Alex? Two eggs, Irish bacon, and beans. No wonder they're so angry in the morning. <laughs> That's what they drink beer from. <laughs> Comes with the coupon. To well, you gotta it. have. I don't drink, but Alex, no if you're gonna have that meal, you better start drinking the six pack. <laughs> We have 42 really? listeners. Oh, That's a record this morning. month. Yeah, we've really... Oh, we have yeah. a fucking hot dog. I mean, really. They're fucking crazy. Somebody on the chat says Tony should have his own show. Oh. <laughs> oh, Tony's old menus. That'd be the whole show. Josh, you enjoying this? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Because Josh calls up here to have some kind of meaningful conversation. Right, Josh? On the one oh, day a call. week that I'm available, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. And he calls to have a meaningful conversation. And what have we talked about that was meaningful today so far? I want to ask. I, not much. I, I want to ask Josh about that Supreme Court decision. Oh, yeah. You know, we're gonna just let people die. We can't tell the OSHA can't can't protect workers at the at the company. Well, I mean, there's the confusion. I don't really think that's what. I mean, that's not what the court said. What the court said was that the person who made the decision didn't have the power to make it, and their view. And until that constitutional question was settled, which they sent back to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals for their review with their larger panel until they make their decision, you know, they've stayed the order. So, I mean, that's, I think that's, you know, the confusion. I mean, yeah. he's not here to, you know, sort of um, make his point but, you know, I saw that Damian Chaplin, you know, he was upset yesterday, and I understand why people were upset, saying that, you know, he doesn't understand how OSHA can have the power to say that a, a crack in the sidewalk or whatever is a violation, but they don't have the power to do this, and I understand that, but the court's point that I happen to agree with, though, is that there isn't just a person who decided that fact that regulation or the any other example that you want to pick that sounds very sensible like that that regulation was not written by the president of the united states 
It was written into law by the Congress of the United States, which was chosen by the people through elections. So the court's point here is that they don't think that the president of the United States had the power to implement such a large regulation. If Congress would pass the same exact language, the court is not saying that you could not enforce that. The court is not saying that the government doesn't have the power to do this. They're saying that the one person who did it in the government doesn't have the power to do it. I mean, if Congress were to write a regulation today saying that employers over X number of people has to regulate their people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, get the shot, collect the information, all that. I think it would still go to the court because people are not going to like it. And then I think the court would say, probably say, well, that's too bad. I think you would get a similar uh, conclusion as they did, you know, on the, uh, on the other side of the case. I mean, on the side of the case that they felt the president had the power, they granted it, okay, which was for hospitals or medical providers funded by the government. So where the government had control, they said the president has the power to do this because he's the head of the government, and right. he can order this done inside the federal government. You know, they just said that basically OSHA does not have the power through an executive order to do this. OSHA would have the power through a congressional well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Josh. They said that OSHA didn't have the power. Could it be that another part of the government does have the power to issue that kind of? I, I, I don't know. I mean, OSHA is probably the main channel that, you know, workplace stuff has to has to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess this is, you know, this is always the confusion with the court it always will be and and all the judges know it it's not just supreme court it's appeals courts and everything else is everyone looks at this in the tangible way okay mm -hmm. of their life of the shot and of the safety and of people dying that's how they look at it but the court does not look at it that way the court looks at it they didn't see this as a medical issue or as a safety issue they reviewed this as a separation of powers issue, okay? I mean, that's that's how I read it. They, they view it as a separation of powers. How much power does the government have? Who has that power? And did they overstep? Were they allowed? You know, all those types of questions. And that was their determination for right now. I mean, it's not completely over because they sent it back to the Sixth Circuit and they issued a stay. Um but I mean, listen, I, I don't know that I understand that a lot of people like the inoculation and all that kind of stuff. I don't know that personally, actually I do know. I personally do not like the government being able to tell workplaces that, I mean, I think that I should be free to have my company tell me that. And then me decide, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go get another job yeah. or me saying, well, Char I don't like this, but I like this job, and I'm going to do it. Charlie has his hand up. Charlie? I may have a misconception of what OSHA is. I thought OSHA was a government agency that was responsible for making sure that workplaces were safe and healthy places to work. No, well, they are. How could they not have the power to, to say this? Again, he's, the court is not saying that they don't have the power. Okay, the court is saying that the person who made the order did not have the power to order OSHA to do it. So if, if OSHA, are you saying that, wait a minute, are you saying that if OSHA did it on their own? No, I'm saying OSHA is governed, okay? The big OSHA book, okay, was written by Congress. Only Congress has the power, for the most part, to make regulation. You, you see, I mean, OSHA is is governed by and directed by they and their job is to enforce the rules that Congress makes. Ah, you know, I mean, that that's what I'm saying. They're they're an enforcement agency 
in a lot of ways. A regulatory. And so, in other words, scheme. it would be up to Congress to issue this? Yes. Yes, okay. if Congress were to just take the same exact language that he wrote in an executive order and pass it through the House and pass it through the Senate and send it onto his desk and he were to put his signature on there, mm -hmm. I think that it would be over. I, again, people still wouldn't like it and they would file a lawsuit. Well, fat like chance, though, a fat chance of and that it, happening. And it, correct, that's exactly. what I'm saying. And it, and it would go yep. to the court again, but at that point, I think the court would lean toward okay they would lean towards saying well this is a this is a law passed by congress and at at most at that point they may they may say well we no longer have a separation of powers issue okay mm -hmm. we now maybe just have a personal freedom issue mm -hmm. so then we they they would look at it in a different way but this to me is a separation of powers issue does the president of the united states have the power to write an executive order that basically makes a new OSHA regulation. And in the OSHA standard, in the OSHA, uh, the, 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 the chapters that set it up, whatever, I'm trying to think what you would want to call that, in their founding document, it's, it's clear, because I've dealt with OSHA many, many times in my career, you know, only Congress can make the laws. Yeah. Now, OSHA has some power within Okay, they have some blank check type of powers, mm -hmm. you know, to make uh, determinations based on industries and that kind of thing. But it's not, you know, but this isn't OSHA going to a plant and saying, you know, you, you got to put a, uh, you got to put some guarding over that pinch point. Okay, mm -hmm. this is OSHA telling, you know, um, tens of millions of people, you have to go have a medical procedure performed. I mean, I know everyone's going to say, oh, you just sit down on the shot. It was, that's fine. It's still a medical procedure. I mean, everyone would qualify it as a, it's a medical procedure, okay? It's, it's done by someone who went to, I mean, college, got a degree, the whole thing. So, I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm sure that, I don't know this for sure, but I would have to think that all nine of the justices that made the decisions or participated probably have had their vaccine. I mean, yeah. I don't think they're anti-vaxxers or anything. Well, here, here, here's a little thing that was kind of interesting. Uh, when the justices gave out this decision, who was the only justice not to be wearing a mask? You know, I didn't see, but I don't think, I thought I saw a drawing or something, in a, like maybe Alito or somebody. No, Gorsuch. Gorsuch. Oh, oh, yeah, maybe he yeah, was. Yeah, right. Gorsuch, yeah. He yeah, didn't wear remember. a mask, and I think... That wasn't so much a, you know, what, what, why did he do that? I mean, it's it's disrespectful of your fellow judges who don't want to be in the same, close to each other without masks on. You know, that's just rude. Yeah, I don't know if it's required or obviously it's I not. I think he I was guess. doing it as a statement. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've seen Tim speak many times. He's a fairly reasonable person from what I see I don't know I mean he might just be like me and he just doesn't like him and you know maybe he's vaccinated hey look he nobody, says, nobody you know, likes masks but I don't wear it for uh, me I wear it for other people yeah I mean and by the way but, I found but that then today, don't. but if you don't want to then don't you don't I'm not asking you to wear one for me I mean that's I don't know. At some point, we're reaching. The, I mean, is this this shit going to go on for a decade? I mean, at some point, you got to make your decision. Oh, by the way, I've been putting down people people who wear them as uh, as diapers, you know, uh, who who under the the nose is exposed. Marjorie brought up something today. Uh, actually, what they're doing is people who don't wear them over their nose are asking to be infected. You breathe in through your nose, you breathe out through your mouth. The mouth is the main way that it spreads, not the nose. The nose is the you put it there to protect yourself from inhaling it. Right. So I mean this yeah. I mean I'm just saying I'm just saying that that's the court's uh, directive there. And over the past couple of decades, there is no doubt that the executive branch and the executive yeah. has grown too large 
and has grown to have too much power, has mm -hmm. certainly exceeded the box that I would think <clears throat> that the Constitutional Convention placed it in. It's well outside that. And it's probably about time some of it got checked. You know, when President Obama lost that case for the National Labor Relations Board, that was one of the first steps that the court had taken to check, you know, executive power about 10 years ago. I mean, my, my point in this and the court's point, again, would always be that you can be upset with him and that's fine, but you are upset with nine people. OK, mm -hmm. when there are tens of millions of Americans who elected their representatives who are doing nothing about this problem, if the people yeah. were truly up in arms about this problem, we're sick of COVID. We want everyone to get a vaccine. Dag on it. We want a law about it. We want it right now. Then they would put pressure on their Congress people and on their on their senators and they would they would get it done. But people are obviously not that upset about it. Yeah. Yes. You know, Alan? because they're not doing that. So I thought the preview. I, I thought the purview of of, of uh, OSHA, which stands for Occupational Health and Safety. I mean, both of those things: health, safety. The the, the vaccine is both of those. I don't. I, so I don't understand why the court would, would would put it down. I understand what you said, Josh, but it seems kind of weird that the court would actually just shut it down. Why not just say? Yeah, everybody that works in the workplace has to get a shot. Well, it's still, I think companies can still mandate it for their company if company, they want yes, to. Yes, privately, because yeah. they're a private company. That's right. Yeah. Private, right. I'm saying that the court is saying what I would say, which is if the president, if we, if this is, a, if the president of the United States has the power to order your workplace to require you to have this done, okay, and we say that's okay. Mm hmm then next week what's to stop the president of the united states from making a different order for something else right. and for him saying well it's for your own safety i'm saying that's where we have to watch out for that stuff mm -hmm. and i mean and i mean everyone i understand everyone is saying it's good for you and it's and all that and i'm just saying that the court said one person decided that so what stops him or her from next week deciding something totally different and then the government, OSHA, the people that work there, are duty-bound to enforce it. Right. Okay? Right. I mean, I'm just saying, what's to stop him from saying next week that, look, the doctors all say that if you eat an apple a day, you'll be healthy. And from now on, everyone who works for a company of 100 or more people eats an apple a day. Really stupid example. I'm just saying, what's to stop them from saying that? Yeah. If this Beta. stands as is then the then the president is there okay to allow them to i'm just saying that it's dangerous for one person to be allowed to make a law that is something of this nature okay if the if the if the congress had voted for the same language in legislation then it would be seen as representative of what the entire nation wants and needs and if it wasn't and if it was a, an incredible overstep, then ideally, theoretically, in the next election, they would throw all those people out and put some folks in there that would undo it. Okay. Because the people would say, no, we're not doing that. That's how it's supposed to work. Now, that isn't how it works, and I get that, but that's how it's supposed to work. And the fact that it doesn't work that way, I cannot blame on 535 people in the Congress and nine people in the court, because you know, it's it's those six hundred people that are dominating the decisions, while the hundred, while the three hundred million allow them to. I mean, well, what? How do we? You know, uh, you know, how do we stop them? I mean, we have to Short of choose sedition. different legislators if we're that upset about it, but we never do. Yeah. I mean, uh, Congress changes hands. In power, but how often does it actually change hands and makeup? I don't know right? why. I don't know why. why that many people. Hold on a second. I don't know why this has happened, but Ray Renati is joining us at the last minute on this right. program. Wow. Are you there, Ray? Or maybe, maybe he'd been in the waiting room for an hour. <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't. Uh, why do you wait till the last minute to call the show, Ray? 
We're saying goodbye. Thank you. He's still connecting. He's still trying to connect his audio. Yeah. <laughs> this is the weirdest show. Okay, Ray, rather close <clears throat> your mouth and put your teeth back in. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. All you gotta do is click your audio on, Ray. Yeah. There, there it is. There you go, Ray. Hey, I just wanted to say hello. I yeah, you're waiting till the last minute of the show. I know. I, it's been hard because my family all gets together late. My kids are going to school. Yeah. 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 yeah well, yeah. You, you weren't here for Tony's caffeine riddled uh, rant. <laughs> oh, know. no. I'm sorry. He was reading to us from menus that no longer you're exist. Lucky. They were old, Alex. Took 350. I know, us. Tony. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're all well aware of that, Tony. Never threw nothing out this woman. And by the way, your dinner's ready. Uh, <laughs> the next pot of coffee that's ringing. Where's that thing come from? I have no idea. It's weird. I just all kinds of weird sounds. By the way, just a slight uh, moment here to mention: I've been using my new stove. <laughs> And I I can turn it on now using um, Alexa. A, a, yeah, a, Alexa. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and I can also turn it on and off from. Uh, or let's say I'm in Paris. <laughs> I can I can turn it on and off. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But you know, oh, there's there's Tony's background. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have my green screen on though, so it's all messed up. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the the full green screen that Zoom has, you know. Yeah. Which doesn't work that well. It's better than Skype's. Skype's is awful. The Skype is uh, uh, Skype's is awful. I don't know. I don't Oh yeah, it's I, awful. You know, we don't use Skype anymore here. Yeah. Uh but uh yeah, this has worked out okay. Um, you know, but anyway, uh, it uh, we're uh, we're living in interesting times. That's a curse. I I understand. Remember, we used to say it was a curse. Yeah. Uh, you know, you live in interesting times. Uh, but I don't like the I don't like how interesting it's been. You know, it's yeah. pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly. Uh, and uh, but then again, you can always rely on a moment of peace. Where Tony comes on a show and reads from menus for us. <laughs> and, and, you know, I got more too. Chinese food, eggs. You missed the whole thing, Ray. Damn. Yeah. You missed. I yeah. can pull up golden chopsticks next week, Alex. If you want that close. Yeah. Right. Golden chopsticks. That was another old uh, Chinese takeout by on Grand Avenue by me. They went out of business. Well, you know, we've though. gotten uh, we've gotten you a certain way along the road here. You know, he's, because he's now you're referring using, to it as Chinese food. That's what I was just yeah, thinking. Yeah. Which is, oh yeah, you must have got. You might have beat that into me now. Now subconscious that I'm not actually not saying it in a racist tone. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very, very nice of you to call tonight, Tony. And uh, be sure before you call next time, drink about five <laughs> cups of coffee. <laughs> you know, because the, the Dunkin' Donuts make tomorrow. That's the, the numbers. The numbers surged when you were there on coffee. Uh, uh, Alan, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, Josh, thank you for giving us a good lesson in democracy. Something that I'm sure has not uh, uh, gone uh, uh, unnoticed by the Republicans. Oh boy. Uh, hey, Al, uh, Charlie. Yeah, what wonderful Charlie seeing you, thing. Kevin. Always great seeing you. Uh, Go Niners. Brian, who's in back of Go you Niners. working? Uh, my daughter. Your daughter? Okay. What is she doing? Looks like she's doing her accounting or something. No, it's Tiffany. She's working. I was going to say, that didn't look like a 13-year-old. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I thought it was a green screen to start with. It, yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. And Tony, thank you so much. Uh, your, your, your calmness and your... Uh, yeah, just Love really, that. really. I like the menus. Yeah, and dollars and Ray, an really? you know, three minutes, more than enough for us to say thank you for being on the show tonight. Hey, I miss you guys. We I gotta try to get my schedule different so I can come on more. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that's our citizen panel for tonight. Wow. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. There they go. 
that's our citizen panel for tonight. Oh uh, boy, what a weird, weird show tonight. But good, good. Anyway, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Uh, I will be back here on Monday at 4 o'clock with our pop-up show, and then we'll be back here again on Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where we'll be here at 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? I think it's this microphone, the camera, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, uh, you know, get vaccinated, wear a mask, you know the drill. See you later. Bye. Bye.